and welcome to Big Deal. I am Nisha Poddar. Now, as you know, we have two special guests on this edition of Big Deal. So let's go straight across to what's piping hot on Big Deal this week. And I would say the investment banking team at Credit Suisse, as per the leak table sourced from an independent agency, Credit Suisse, remember, is topping the charts. Look at the numbers. And I have some data with me here, which has been sourced from an independent agency. And year-to-date share of wallet in the investment banking is 14%, which is the highest. Mergers and acquisition is 19%. Again, the highest in terms of the global investment banks in the country. And in terms of deal value, it's whopping $5.4 billion ahead of the other global investment banks. So let me introduce to you the gentlemen who's who are really making this possible. Welcome to Big Deal, gentlemen, Sumit Jalan as well as Gaurav Pradhan. Thank you. What's really working for you at Credit Suisse? Sumit. Thanks, Nisha, uh, for a good introduction here. Uh, you know, but it's interesting uh, you mentioned this uh, as a strategy but over the years. Uh, CS, we have not really changed or focused so much on league table. We have focused more on client solutions and client needs. And uh, it's interesting we are in this spot that uh, you know that strategy has worked uh, and we are topping uh, the charts. We we focused on a lot more of uh, sell side M&A, but gotten into the client requirements mm -hmm. and uh, beat a capital market situation where it's not leak table of volume, mm -hmm. but uh, interesting transactions where investors are happy, corporates are happy. Mm -hmm. Beat sell side M&A, but where you said close to about 19% right now, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much some of the largest transactions uh, which have happened in the country and quite complex uh, across sectors. Uh, we have focused uh, tactically on some of those over the years, and mm -hmm. it's just uh, paid off. Yes. Yeah. Similarly, I think uh, along with the advisory, I think clients today look for investment banks to provide balance sheet, uh, especially with a good understanding of the sector, the research, the backing that we have. We are able to extend our balance sheet alongside uh, clients, which makes them feel a lot more as partners. And that's the whole approach that I think Red Suez is working uh, and which is working wonders for us now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing a very strong uh, last two quarters, three quarters, and we think the next two quarters look pretty strong. So pipeline well. is also strong. Absolutely. In fact, I want to take it from there. So Sumit, clearly the deal street has picked up in the last uh, few months, I would say. Before that, it was dormant for a very long time. What are the reasons and the drivers for this to happen? See, India, I think, uh, is in that classic Goldilocks uh, situation at a macro level, and this hasn't happened in a long, long uh, time where a lot of macro factors are working out, political stability is in uh, place, corporate uh, India is feeling m far more sanguine about their own country and, um, you know, per the growth prospects. One thing which has not really taken off is so much of investment cycle, which takes its own uh, time. So how do you solve for that? Uh, liquidity, be it from credit market or equity market, is at lifetime high. So corporate India is therefore taking calls around M&A. Okay. They are buyers. Mm -hmm. Likewise, uh, they want to be winners in their respective businesses. Uh, so to that extent, uh, if they are not amongst top two or three in a particular industry, they are sellers uh, too. You have uh, that situation where the foreigners are quite keen with respect uh, to deploying more capital in the country, be it FBI or FDI. Mm -hmm. So they are... Uh, they are practically paying top dollars uh, beyond even you know per rich multiples to actually have a long term play into the country and mm -hmm. that's why we are seeing a massive momentum i don't think uh, we would have seen this kind of a deal frenzy mm -hmm. in last decade plus uh, as we are seeing right now mm -hmm. the other big uh, tectonic change i would say which has happened in the country is now a balance sheet repair kind of uh, situations can't no longer be solved through mm -hmm. the credit markets or the banking system so the bankers the lenders are also forcing uh, some form of uh, exit which is happening uh, through the m and market. That's true. And uh, Gaurav, uh, I also see that uh, this particular pickup in activities across the board. There have been bonds also, there have been IPOs, big ticket ones, which are some of them in pipeline, some of them have happened. And uh, the m and and deals have also happened, some of the inbound, outbound, both put together. How do we see uh, the present conditions, especially coming in from uh, the new development at the RBI where the norms have been changed and corporate bond market is going to get some fillip because of this? Yeah, so I think uh, you're more specifically referring to the recent change which came 24 hours back uh, mm -hmm. and the masala bond activity. So, you know, CS uh, has been at the forefront of the masala bond activity over the last six months. So two out of the three public deals that have happened so far, we have been involved in. We are involved in another three to four deals and pipeline at this point in time. 
what this activity from RBI does suggest are two important changes. I think one is uh, it gives a lot more credence to the international investors that this bond market is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Banks accessing this market will widen and deepen both the kind of issuers from India and then that attracts more and more investors as well. So I think the whole segment is very positive. The other thing also is we think this is going to be positive for local interest rates mm -hmm. and transmission of uh, you know credit mm -hmm. into local markets uh, outside of the banking sector, which is what RBI has been hinting at. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this works further from an RBI perspective uh, into diversifying credit across capital markets, bringing in new investors, and what better uh, news that uh, investment banker could have had. Investment bankers, good news, but probably not for the conglomerates, uh, Sumit. Uh, you've been in touch with all the big ones, and now the bank's exposure has been limited to the big houses in terms of the number and the amount that can be really given. You think it's going to be a constraint, and we are already seeing a lot of financial management and a lot of mergers also happening by way of uh, managing the cash in difficult situations as well. That's a good point. I think uh, this again is a trend uh, which is, uh, I would say, uh, relatively uh, new where we are seeing uh, conglomerates now partly at times feeling the heat or partly at times on account of their own portfolio adjustments. I think on the capital side, I still feel that it's diversification of uh, sources. So if a banking channel, uh, there is a uh, limit uh, which comes in, uh, the capital market solutions uh, do come in, such as masala, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's less driven by the capital constraint. It is more driven by their own own desire around whether they want to be uh, the seventh player in a particular uh, business mm -hmm. or uh, they want to be uh, the top three. Mm -hmm. And second, I think conglomerates also would want to differentiate between some uh, who are uh, sitting on healthier balance sheets and businesses and some who are unfortunately not. And that's where uh, the second category gets impacted a uh, lot more with the capital constraint, particularly from the banking system that you're alluding to. So while mergers are one flavor of the season, the other one is consolidation as well. As you said, it's their choice. Either they want to be number seven or they want to be in top three. If they have to be in top three, there is consolidation in many sectors that we are seeing, IT in particular. Are you seeing specific action uh, in this particular sector and is it going to be driven by private equity players who have already taken a share of the pie and now they want to expand that uh, particular platform? Absolutely. I think uh, this question is uh, two parts to it. Uh, one is more generic and second uh, pertaining IT. Uh, the first uh, more generic point is uh, over the last 30 or 40 years this for the first time you are seeing a domestic market consolidation uh, which mm -hmm. is uh, happening particularly from the earlier point conglomerates uh, that they are sellers as well as some of uh, the other conglomerates are uh, buyers and we can get into specific names or the NFR uh, deal activity which has happened in that. On to your uh, second point, uh, I think uh, you know it's driven more not in the large IT space but more in the mid cap uh, IT space and partly by, see IT particularly by, is a business partly of uh, scale and valuations also follow by, scale. So we earlier we saw by, five or six years back where an HCL went and acquired a couple of uh, assets became uh, larger. There was also always that big three, big four. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we saw uh, Tech Mahitra, uh, Satyam uh, consolidation uh, happen. And that completely transformed and CL as a business uh, and uh, Tech Mahindra as a business. And we talk uh, top three, four, five mm -hmm. now. Likewise, uh, some of the other mid-cap IT uh, firms uh, and back now with more private equity uh, money and there has been controlling transactions uh, which have happened in the space. There is far greater desire and appetite to play the scale game. It yes. helps operationally and it helps re-rate the multiples also. So absolutely, it's a trend to stay here. So one more point. Uh, it's just uh, uh, very recently that Infosys has given a gloomy picture for future. If one of the top five bellwethers in the IT sector is facing the heat, then the others would be forced to consolidate as well. I would say, uh, see, you got to dissect the IT businesses into their respective niche, particularly if you're talking about uh, the mid-cap IT uh, space. Uh, partly what you're saying is uh, true, but uh, they, they operate uh, in respective uh, niches. And I think uh, the consolidation also is because you, uh, when you're dealing with niche businesses, uh, you can club to different uh, niches and create a uh, larger operation out of it and not necessarily be driven so much by the headline international macro downturn which an emphasis uh, do get impacted with. Gaurav, you, you agree with this. It's not headlines yeah. macro. It's we cost synergies as well. So there is cost synergies in putting two the operations together. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all cost-driven business. IT is yet 
uh, cost driven. But not just IT. All the deals that we have uh, seen, even though the overall economics have not really supported large transactions, but it's the specific company or a promoter's desire which has really led to uh, large transactions that we Absolutely. have seen. Absolutely. Uh, like the Nirma transaction that happened, the Lafarge one, you were advisors to Nirma as well. That was a large one and a lot of play by a lot of big houses as well in terms of the promoter's aspiration which plays a huge role as well. With our ultra high net worth strategy, Credit Suisse focus on ultra high net worth strategy, we play that little edge uh, mm. in having a good understanding of that promoter. So high net worth strategy, which means what, Sumit, that you, you let go of certain transactions even though you have good relationship and could make a small buck, but uh, the effort that really goes into it's a, it's it would a, be it's as It's actually money. a very good point. You know, uh, we have seen situations, we have said no, and clients actually respect that, which is very unlike uh, Indian banking, at least uh, as a trait uh, that I've seen over the last two decades. But how difficult is the scenario in getting a mandate also? Is there still a very small pie for which all the investment banks are just queuing up and uh, it's, it's quite a hectic uh, space to be in. It's reasonably similar to your business. Hunt for news, hunt for <laughs> deals and it's very complicated. I would say stakes are very high for you guys. Investment <laughs> <laughs> bankers are being choosers here, uh, that's news. But uh, anyways, we'll take a, a short break on that particular bit. But we will uh, talk specifics about which sectors are going to see maximum amount of deal flows and also because of what uh, factors. So stay tuned to Big Deal. We'll be back in a short while.